What first got you into rap music? Because you're from Canada. I'm from Harlem. Um, and then I moved to Canada. Where specifically in Harlem? Bro, let's keep it on the down low. But uh, yeah, I went to Canada and I started working in nightclubs. And yo, hold on. Yo, bro, I'm... I'm on a I'm on an I'm on an interview right now. Why why you keep calling? Hey, we're 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 right now. I'm at Complex. We're doing an interview. I can't talk right now. Let's talk later. Female rap. What were we saying? We were saying how did you get into rap music? Right. I was working in nightclubs. I was bouncing and. Yeah, I guess I was just around a lot of that hip hop stuff and and some EDM actually. Like, you know that retard music, like house music, the fucking crackhead music. I know a bit of that. I don't like that. Uh, but yeah, it was mostly hip hop, and uh, it was really at the nightclub that I like got into this stuff. And uh, and then when I first got on the internet, I said Migos are the greatest of all time, and Migos are way better than Tupac. And that, that started like a firestorm of people hating me. But the Migos changed music sonically, like how it's lit. The Migos spawned more copycats than Tupac ever did. That's just, there is no one copying tu Tupac. When I was 13, I had my mom, I had a dream. And how many people copied Tupac? Four or five, you know? And, and some people are like, oh, that style is just hard to emulate. I don't think that's the reason. I think the Migos were just more influential to, they were more influential to the culture, but Tupac was a political thing. You know what I mean? That's why it was so big. Tupac's like the Martin Luther of rap. So, but, but the Migos are the Malcolm X. You know what I mean? So do you think Tupac is still alive? Nah, nah, nah. There's some people who have that, that conspiracy where he's underground in New York, right? He's in an underground city. No, I've never heard of that. I looked into that conspiracy and it's fucking, a meth head started that. It's like there's, it holds no weight. So I think he's dead. And uh, I think Tupac's like the most overrated rapper of all time. Right? This is not going to fly well with anyone, but really, you know, like I like these stories, you know, Tupac, Eminem, the people who tell stories. I like a good story told. But I don't want my dick sucked with Tupac in the background or Eminem or any storyteller. But when the Migos are, you know, at the party, now the girls are partying, you know? Like nobody gets their dick sucked to Hail Mary. But Slippery, excuse me. You know what I mean? So Migos definitely, definitely brought better memories in my life than Tupac. Tupac actually brought some depressing memories. So you were pretty sad when the Migos broke up and then eventually take off passing away. Yeah. Yeah, I was pretty sad, but, but around that time I stopped listening to all music. I switched to audiobooks because uh, there was this, um, there's the CIA operative that was talking about uh, psycho psychological operations done on the mind and when the mind is at the lowest point. And apparently when the mind is at the lowest point, that's when the artists trap the mind. So it, when you're at your most depressed state, that's when you play your music. And that's when you get fucking those thought loops that destroy your life. For example, I used to just have a couple beers and then there was this song that went like, Molly, Percocet, Molly, Percocet, just repetition. A mask off by future? Yeah, and Hitler once said, if you want people to believe something, you just repeat it a bunch of times. And you keep repeating it, and they just believe it. So I'm at the bar with buddies, and then that was the first time in my life, I think 2017 or 18, I said, Yo, I don't want no beers. I want to try this Percocet. I want to try this Molly. This is the first time in my life I'm switching from alcohol to some life destroyer shit. You're telling me that that song is not a commercial for those drugs. This is clear psychological warfare and it's obvious as day. And that's, I'm not saying that's how I got hooked on perks, but that's my first perk. My first perk is because I got infiltrated psychically by music. So do you think music was originally a psyop or they invaded music 
and turned it into a sire. Yeah, no. Anything that gets popular just gets invaded, right? It's not from scratch ever, right? The arts are infiltrated. All arts. So when would you say rap specifically it got infiltrated? Would you say when it was kind of getting a little like zesty? No, it's when the music shifted from my mama had a dream to now I'm sipping lean and it just became all drug, drug, drug. It became, every song became a drug commercial and there was a fucking retard named Lil Pump as the biggest name. Remember that era? I do, yes. That shift, after we turned that wheel, we never went back. To this day, we're still talking about drugs. And it's like, God damn, where I'm from, you just do the drugs. You don't talk about them all day. That's like that fucking stoner white boy talking about weed all day. It's like, shut the fuck up and go listen to Mac Miller, bro. So do you believe hip hop is being feminized? Because other rappers have said, you know, that there are certain. Oh, yeah. In the 90s. If the 90s rappers were alive today, every hip hop channel would be called gay. Every single channel would be gay to them. Not gay, it would be F slur gay. They would be so fucking angry, those guys in the baggy clothes. Every, they, they look at Uzi and be like, what the fuck? Well, Get I that think... lollipop out your mouth, little boy. What the fuck? And they're all liars, bro. All these rappers are gangsters. They're not gangsters. None of them are actual gangsters. That's why I, when 6 9 gets all this hate, I'm like, you guys know that all the other rappers do exactly what that little boy does, like they pretend. I think the only real ones were the Chicago Drill guys. Yeah. And they're all gone, right? It became a violent scene. Yeah, that is true. A lot of them have gotten locked up. If you're died. a mainstream rapper, you are no gangster, bro. Stop it. So a lot of people say, so what do you define as when an artist sells their soul? Or is that like really a, a thing? Yeah, when an artist sells their soul, they're pretty much doing some feminine shit for the label. So they'd be like, hey, Uzi, put this dress on. Or Thug, or whoever. I, I, who, who's, the, who's the guy who just recently had a dress on? Lil Nas X. See, I don't even know, and I know you know. There's like, all of these guys gotta, gotta put a dress on, this humiliation ritual. And then boom, they're top of the charts. He is number one. Is he? Yeah. That's that gay, that's that gay power. Well, now there's uh, an actual gay rapper that has a hit. Who? Uh, this dude named Saucy Santana. He's got a BBL. The gayest name I've ever heard. Yeah. 